Hey guys, welcome back to Telltale. I'm Emily. I'm Greg. And today we are going to be getting another little dick. Another <laughs> Philip K. Dick. Um, this one is called The Great Sea. What's mm -hmm. our deets? The, uh, the Great Sea was published in an amazing called Cosmos Science Fiction in September of 1953. And I don't know a whole lot more detail about that, except that I believe this was one of like two that were in September. Okay. Two or three that were in September. So we're moving along. We're yeah. getting further, but we're, we've really only covered like the first year of his career Goodness so far. And, and this, is, this is our 24th Philip Dick video. Goodness, he's a machine. Yes. Well, you had to be back then. They, the pay rate was so low. Yeah, That's what I'm discovering is everybody high. back then that if they didn't have a full-time job, if they were trying to make it as a writer, mm -hmm. they had to just write like insane people mm -hmm. in order to sell enough to be able to pay their bills because yeah. the, the pay rate was so low. And I guess that's still kind of true today. And we are having some some uh, writers on strike right now over similar situations. Well, that and, um, you know, I'm seeing writers like Norman Spinrad trying to find somebody to help him with his novel because apparently he doesn't have a publisher and, oh, and Jeff Vandermeer um, offering special deals on his stuff stating that, that full-time writing just doesn't pay enough mm -hmm. to... Uh, to really make it and, and so you have to find creative ways to make money and and it's just it's sad that some of the most valuable people in our society are struggling so hard just to make ends meet and yeah, wasn't it, it makes it hard for them to do what they do one it wasn't it churchill when they proposed for the ward effort to cut funding to the arts churchill said then what are we fighting for during world exactly. war exactly and I'm a firm believer, like, if you want a beautiful world, you need to stop starving the artists. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us really realized uh, a lot more during COVID, especially when all we had were books and movies to keep us occupied because work was sparse or scarce at all mm -hmm. with the shutdown, that I myself found myself staying sane through that period of time because I had books and other things to have this escapism to feel like... I wasn't alone and I exactly. had my community that I could talk to about books and things. Mm -hmm. So it really stabilized a lot for me. And I think yeah. others have experienced that. And now we're starting to realize, oh yeah, that was extremely important to have mm -hmm. those, that artistry out there. Mm -hmm. But now you have things like AI programs that certain people in our society think that that's as good as what a human being could do. <laughs> Maybe a fifth grader. And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, even if they improve those programs, mm -hmm. they're still not there's still right. programs. They're still not human beings. They don't have the cap capability of judgment that human beings can make. Mm -hmm. they maybe would also maybe someday. I'm not role. ruling that out entirely, but right now the AI programs are are doing some things that are very questionable. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and not just violating copyright, but just what they come up with is, mm -hmm. you look at it and just go, no. That's not good. <laughs> that's, that's Who thinks not this good. is good? Um, Why is this good? Especially the image generating ones, putting, you know, stuff in places where it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't know any better. Yeah. It can't make that critical judgment. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not true intelligence. It's not capable. Yeah. So you have to have a human being at some point taking that product and cleaning it up in order to make it usable, really. But that's but, not the case in this story, is it? No, yes but no. this kind of relates to that whole issue. It's, it's interesting how many... We've, we've read a number of these science fiction stories from the, the 50s and even earlier where science fiction writers talked about computers and robots where Are they the showed yeah. these potential issues with that technology. And ultimately, some ultimately, the fact that mm -hmm. computers just know on and off. Mm -hmm. They don't know right from wrong. Yes. They don't have moral judgment. They mm -hmm. don't have any kind of compassion mm -hmm. or sympathy or um, empathy with anything. They just, they just know do and not do. Turn it on or turn it off. 
it is or it isn't mm -hmm. ones and zeros that's conditional logic mm -hmm. that's all computers are capable of processing at this time they aren't capable of all the higher functions that our minds are capable of and that's where this story comes from. Do you want to hit the synopsis? Yeah. So the synopsis is this tribe after some kind of... it. We suspect it is Earth. And it is after a catastrophic um, worldwide post-apocalyptic event. Yeah. Something Though it isn't call... stated specifically that this no. is planet Earth. It was like something called the... It wasn't the bang or like the shake. Something yeah. like that. That people refer to. And this tribe is sending this young man off to go ask the Great Sea three questions. And if the Great Sea does not answer those questions, he'll come back to the tribe. But if the Great Sea can't answer one of the questions, or can't answer all the questions, then the young man will never come back. Mm -hmm. And others have gone before him. And they've never come back. And have never come back. So he goes on this journey... Of like a day and a half or maybe two days, two, three days or something like that. Yeah. Into the ruins of this city and there's a lot of radiation. Like he's got a radiation clicker and all this stuff with him. And he's just trying to like move through these ruins and this rubble of what used to be an ancient city to go find the Great Sea, which is housed in some kind of like computer laboratory mm -hmm. situation that's dilapidated. And so he goes to ask these three questions. And the first question was, where does the rain come from? Mm -hmm. this, oh, what was the second one? The second question mm -hmm. was... Man, I can't remember. I don't either. Yeah. I can't remember the other two questions. But the first one was, where does the rain come from? And they're really trying to stump this computer. Mm -hmm. I actually felt one of the questions was kind of a cop-out. Yeah. Oh, because one of the questions was, how did everything begin? Mm -hmm. And the computer only stated theories. Mm -hmm. It didn't state fact. So it didn't right. answer the question. Right. So I felt like... But that's what a computer does. Yeah. And so I felt like the computer didn't actually answer the question because it couldn't. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, I feel like the young man should have been able to go back to his tribe. But spoiler alert, he didn't. He got turned into human soup mm -hmm. for the computer to consume in order to keep itself alive because electricity wasn't working anymore. Right. So, spoiler. That's how that happened. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he ended up, the computer ended up answering all the questions. But I got really pissed off because that last one of how everything began, since a human can't know... And all it is is theories. I really felt like the computer should have been wrong. Because it couldn't answer that. Definitely. Yeah, but it, in the story of the... It, in the world of this story, the computer is taking control. Human beings are its slaves. Mm -hmm. the com and, okay, lots of spoilers here. Yeah, here goes. The computer caused the war that yes. destroyed civilization. <laughs> Allegedly. It, it is claiming that's what it did. We don't mm -hmm. know for sure if it's actually on okay. its own that it did that. Yeah. It could be lying. But the computer pretty much took over the world and has enslaved human beings. <coughs> and like you say, they are now just the food that keeps the, yeah, computer, the computer running. Yeah, the computer going because somehow so, it figured out how to You know, the, the computer is way. just... I felt like the computer could spit out any bullshit answer. And Honestly, the human being wouldn't... Wouldn't, wouldn't know, know the, the difference. difference. Yes. <laughs> you know, so he didn't have to be right or wrong. Yeah. All he had to do was claim he was right. And, and then, yeah. <laughs> and so and that's so kind of how I felt. They it can was... never stomp the computer. <laughs> yeah. I think it was, that's why I was so angry about the cop-out answer. Because this kid wouldn't know if it was right or not. But, but it did say there are theories and started spewing out the theories. Yeah. But a theory isn't a fact. So yeah, this, but this, this story kind guy of wouldn't have off. known the difference. <laughs> yeah, so this computer <laughs> pissed me off because I'm like, you're. I feel like there was a lot of like very humanesque deception mm -hmm. going on with this computer. I didn't. Mm -hmm. It 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 was fucking around. Yeah, <laughs> with people. So the um, this story, in my mind, is like a precursor 
to I have no mouth and I must scream, mm -hmm. where the last humans are trapped inside the computer, being tortured by the computer. Mm -hmm. Kind of taking the same idea and running with it and mm -hmm. making it even far worse. Mm -hmm. um, so I am going to speculate that Allison probably read this story and was somewhat inspired by it to write his masterpiece. Um, and it, the story is also, it, it's very relevant today. Uh, I just learned something about ChatGPT. Yeah. How, they de how the program determines what is a right answer and what is a wrong answer to feed people when, when they, you know, ask for information, yeah. ask ChatGTP to write something yeah. on a topic. It's going out into the internet. It's working by statistics and probability. That's what I suspected. It's, yeah, looking, okay. it's looking at everything on the internet, coming up with all the things it can find that are, are the most relevant to what so was posed to it, and using statistics and probability to determine which one of those is most correct. So what you're getting is basically a fact influenced by public view you're getting internet facts yeah from chat gpt okay yeah um you're getting a quote-unquote fact based off of what's most popular what's the most popular opinion yeah. honestly so if i were a hacker the first thing i'd be doing is flooding the in from the internet with something that is total misinformation you just believe in the moon with the chat gpt no sorry <laughs> yeah i mean that's all you need is, moon is to get it Get some piece of misinformation in enough yeah. places on the internet that Chat GPT goes, Well, this is the one that's popping up the most. It must be the correct answer. Oh, God. <laughs> that's I how mean, this, it, it works that simply and that stupidly to give us correct answers. It, it's the wisdom of, it's collective wisdom rather than empirical data. Mm hmm. Which is a huge should be Doesn't a huge that just red flag. Speak so much to our society right now, <laughs> like and well, how yeah. things seem like the whole fake news thing mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Where it's all, like all you need to do is, if you want to discredit something, is claim it's fake on the internet mm -hmm. and put together some Photoshop video, yeah, showing that somebody is is lying or is yeah. showing that somebody is really not what we think they are and and all of a sudden they're just discredited in everybody's mind yeah because they saw it on the internet mm -hmm. so it must be true right but then there's <laughs> even things too like i was reading this article which i think i posted and i don't know when it's actually going to drop i can't remember if i posted it immediately or if i posted it another time but there was this book about a young man that has had an accident and his family who was christian believed like he was saying things that sounded like he had had a near-death experience a mm. paranormal near-death experience and went to heaven mm -hmm. and like despite all the theologians saying like some of this stuff doesn't make sense biblically even in the first place and then finally when the young man was old enough he came out and said yeah i just said all that to get attention mm -hmm. And the publisher, of course, ended up finally, like, just not producing the book anymore. But it became one of those things. It, like, tore apart his family because his dad had written most of the book. And there was a divorce and all this other stuff. But there's so many people out there who think he's now the liar. Mm -hmm. That he's, even though he's an adult, saying, like, I never experienced this. Yeah. And I, or, like, I, I did it to get attention. And some of the things I said I didn't realize my dad was putting into a book. Mm -hmm. Like, I just was being a kid and liked the attention. Yeah. And, like, none of this has happened. Right. Like, I'm, I am a now quadriplegic person, and I'm really ashamed of myself for having just been a dumb kid. And also, <laughs> why did people trust me when I was just a dumb kid who had gone through a very traumatic brain injury experience mm -hmm. that could have caused any number of illusions and stuff? So he's just, like... It's just been this ongoing feud in the family as well as in the Christian and uh, especially Christian publishing community because these heaven stories were always like such a big deal. Mm -hmm. And like even theologians and a lot of Christian publishers in the industry say we shouldn't be publishing things like this, especially because kids are unreliable. Mm -hmm. um, even though we act like they're so innocent, like some kids are just looking for attention. We can't eliminate the imperfection of it. 
mm-hmm. kind of thing. So it's it's interesting how the public is so willing to hang on to something, even when the person who it was surrounding says that never happened. Yeah. And it's like, that's the danger you run into with things like AI coming up with popular opinion mm-hmm. methods. And we have to remember, computers don't know. Yeah, they, they only know what we tell it. Yeah. And they're using, and, and they know, and we know that not everything out on the internet is true. But so far, these programs are only using probability. How often the same thing pops up to determine whether it's true or not. There's no scientific method. There's no empirical data being applied here. Mm -hmm. So it can easily be manipulated. It can easily be skewed. And the computer has no capability of smelling a rat. Mm -hmm. So they can be, they can have the wool pulled over their eyes. And so the great C, yeah, it can give answers, but it doesn't know that the answers necessarily are correct because it only knows what's been programmed yep and it claims to know everything but and it only knows everything but if it's been programmed it's been with crap then yeah. it's going to give you back crap and mm-hmm. but these people have lost all their technology have lost their knowledge and so they they're not they don't know the difference <laughs> yeah each of them like i think in the beginning the young man had memorized like four books mm-hmm. he had four books memorized and one of them was on biology yeah. So he didn't really have a ton of context for anything. No. And all this literature probably went up in flames. It sounds like mm-hmm. a radioactive situation happened, some kind of ho- nuclear holocaust sounds or like something it. in the story. So you're just like trusting that this computer that destroyed everything is going to just let you live if it's mm-hmm. wrong. It doesn't sound <laughs> like... It sounds like it's become a very narcissist mach- well, narcissistic machine. Well, the computer machine. doesn't let you live because yeah. it wants to eat you. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> so whether you get it, it right or wrong, it's soup. still going to kill you and, and consume you in its soup. Yeah, good soup. <clears throat> so um, I think what Philip Dick is trying to get at here is that relying on technology too much can be a bad thing if we're not careful. Yes. It can lead to situations where these computers, which do not have consciences, mm-hmm. do not have empathy, and do not have any capacity for caring, um, if we give them too much control, it can be the end of us. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least make our lives difficult. Yeah. And... Uh, of course, like I say, Ellison went a lot farther than that in I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. I think he wrote the epitome of that kind of story mm-hmm. of how over-reliance on technology could be bad. And, and I just read another novel. I didn't tell you anything about this. Mm-hmm. I just shot my video on Go it. For it. Um, Norman Spinrad put a book called Nowhere Land out. It's just a, a rough first draft, but he's trying to find a publisher. Mm-hmm. And find an editor to help him clean it up. Mm-hmm. So what he did, and I'm assuming he did this because he wasn't getting the responses he wanted from publishers, but mm-hmm. he, he threw the first draft up on Amazon Kindle for 99 cents and said, I'm going to leave it there for 30 days. Go have it. Buy it and read it. Mm-hmm. Let me know so what you think. Yeah. I did. Mm-hmm. And I'm the first reviewer on Goodreads because <laughs> I read it right away. I, I dropped what I was doing and, and just dug in and read this book. It was really good, but it is um, a little bit of a spoiler for it. It is all about what would happen if the Internet suddenly stopped for yeah. some reason. Mm. <laughs> um, lots of things would I know a lot of people who would instantly kill themselves. <laughs> well... There's Honestly, a, like I know people whose probably emotional status is so fragile that if they didn't have social media to boost their ego, they would probably commit suicide. Yeah. And I think that's horrible. And but, it's not teenagers either. Yeah. It's actual adult people. That this, I think. this is a near future, though, mm-hmm. where cars are being run by the system. And mm. um, while well, we already have where power plants are already into a grid that's already controlled through all of our computers. Mm-hmm. and there's so much that relies on it. So if, if our computers and our computer network and our internet suddenly stopped for some reason, like somebody introduced some kind of virus that just wiped everything out mm-hmm. faster than, than we could possibly prevent it and, and we had no way of reloading, um, so much of our civilization would grind to a halt. Mm-hmm. Our banks would probably fail. Banks would mm-hmm. fail because banking is all electronic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, money is mostly electronic <laughs> credit cards. Yeah. Um, 
most companies would, would not be dead. able to, you know. No, <laughs> the only on the only silver lining. <laughs> you know, but you know, most businesses would grind to a halt mm -hmm. because they're they're all totally dependent on computers the and web apps. Museum would become a business again. Yeah. <laughs> the museum I work at would be a business. Well, yeah, because without the computers, we'd have to go back to their kind of publishing. Yeah, letterpress printing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, just so many things would... would and it makes you think, because I lived in the 1970s when we didn't have... Yeah. There were computers, but they weren't... Only the biggest corporations and governments had these computers that filled whole fo floors mm -hmm. of buildings yeah and nobody else really had them the best the best i had my dad had a texas instrument calculator mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it could do scientific and calculations the, yeah i'm in that weird period too where like technology was just being introduced to domestic households mm-hmm so I remember us getting our first computer, and I remember yeah. advertisements for the internet growing up as but it was becoming a thing. When I was a kid, we got our news from the newspaper and, mm -hmm. the, and the network TV news. Yep. We watched TV, mm -hmm. had to go to the theater for first-run movies because mm -hmm. they didn't show up on TV yeah, for like them. five, yeah. six years yeah. till home box office came along and cable. We were still um, listening to cassette tapes and the radio. Yeah, radio was big. Yeah. Uh what was the other one I was thinking? Um, communications. Mm -hmm. You had phones that were wired. You didn't have cell phones. Mm -hmm. They didn't exist. Yeah. You didn't have any of that stuff. So, and of course, no internet. And we got along just fine. Yeah. The world went forward just fine. Yeah. No problems. You had credit cards, but they had to be swiped. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you in a, a little, thing like, where carbon, they printed on car through carbon. Yeah. yeah. Carbon paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all of that has changed. All that technology is not totally gone away. It's still here. We still have network TV. We still have the plastic cards. So they could go back to the carbon swipe mm -hmm. thing if they needed to. Um, you know, and we could we do still have landline phones around. Yeah, Just no they're phone still booths. Around. Yeah. So we could reverse it at this time, but our economy will collapse, though. There's so many jobs that rely on internet. That and so many people that just don't know how to deal with that. How yeah. they they have no clue yeah. about all our influencers would yeah. have no jobs suddenly. Exactly. They'd have to have day jobs again if if they didn't already. Yeah. Everything would just fall apart. But right there'd now. be a lot of jobs that would come back that have gone away. That's true. Like That's typographers. True. Yes. <laughs> There used to be type houses, mm -hmm. businesses that did nothing but photo typesetting for you. Mm -hmm. And those don't exist anymore. Nope. Because it's all done by computer. Mm -hmm. We could go back to that. Yeah. We have the technology still. Yeah. And there's still the process of manufacturing a lot of those same components that made that a, pro a, a process. Mm hmm Like the red stuff. So we're not totally <laughs> screwed. We could yeah. roll back, but it a lot of people, people would, would have not have a hard time emotionally. Function. Yeah. Going back to more analog stuff. Right. For sure. Definitely. But yeah. So, you know, there's there's a lot of issues raised by this story that are important to us right now. That is interesting for a story that was published in September of 1953. Mm -hmm. When computers were still very, very young and very, very new. Mm -hmm. um, even so, it, it was a really good story, but... Like I say, I have no mouth and I must scream, takes it and raises it to the end. Yeah, level. yeah. Um, so I, I feel like it can't be a top tail just because it doesn't quite go far enough. Mm -hmm. I'm just mad at it because of that. <laughs> All the computers founded was theories of how yeah. there was no answer because mm -hmm. it all is only theory. Mm -hmm. So that made me mad and I was like, nope, pissed. Yeah. Maybe you were, you were expecting the computer to have the answer? <laughs> well, I was expecting the computer to bullshit. Yeah, instead of in some, saying in, that it Yeah, was or theory. like to say it was a fact. But he, because mm -hmm. he so specifically said there, are, here are the theories, mm -hmm. and the kid didn't pick up on it, kind of makes me feel like you're just taking advantage of this human. And I don't yeah. feel like that 
was. That made me mad. So that's why it was a top tail for me because I was like, that's frustrating and okay. pisses me off. But it is a really good story, and it and it is one I would recommend mm-hmm. people reading because it, it it was fun and mm-hmm. it's short. Yes, so. and it is a cautionary like it's an it's a relevant cautionary tale. Not that yeah. I think I myself am not a luddite. Like I. I love integrating technology. A lot of it keeps me alive Mm -hmm. and that sort of thing with my insulin pump because I am a type 1 diabetic and I love being able to write openly to the public through blogging and things like that. But there are just some places I think that AI does not belong and I fully believe it's it's the arts. And technology in general. Mm -hmm. We've always had corporations that just grab onto something and they run with it before Mm -hmm. thinking through it's like they forget what that there kind should of be an problems ethics are going to come. So you know, like a lot of the mm-hmm. plastics technologies and stuff, they mm-hmm. just went and dumped stuff where it seeped into the groundwater. Yeah, and they had no clue that it was going to be killing people. Yeah, or like asbestos they, in homes they causing didn't, some yeah. cancer. They didn't. They yeah. didn't do due diligence to work through the whole thing and find out what problems there might be and plan for them. Mm-hmm. And so then. You know, people actually died from stuff. Yeah. And now we're doing it once. We haven't learned anything. We're doing it again with AI. We're just Mm -hmm. putting it out there because a lot of people are smelling the money. Yeah. And we're not stopping and thinking about, is this really producing the results we want? Is this really um, as sophisticated as we need it to be to be useful? Mm -hmm. Is it really going to have a positive in- impact on our society mm-hmm. whatever negative impacts it'll have what can we do to plan for it we're not doing yeah. any of that and, and we honestly never do. <laughs> i think that's just on par with how capitalism works you sit there and think of all the good things and try to be positive about it and you completely ignore all the red flags that it could be causing because now we're running into issues where like teachers are requiring their students to hand write their essays again Mm -hmm. because there's so much chat gpt coming through and they're plagiarizing other work and utilizing Mm -hmm. it and yes there are programs you can get to find out if this was plagiarized or not Mm -hmm. but it's just becoming such a problem that teachers are like you have to handwrite from your own understanding now no computers no none of this like people are cheating and you know yeah it's it's and it goes much further and deeper than that. Like, to every new and wonderful thing that should be good, there is always that little bit of evil in people. Yeah. <laughs> Where there's like, man, I could use this maliciously. But when it comes to teaching, I mean, this, most of at least public school is just spitting back the, the facts, facts that are given to you. Yeah. So what difference does it make if I write it in my own handwriting or I go onto Wikipedia and copy and paste... The fact Mm -hmm. that The Great Sea by Philip K. Dick was published in Cosmos magazine in September of 1953. Mm -hmm. What difference does it make if I get that by copying off the internet or I write it myself? It's it's a fact. It's unchangeable. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I can put into my own words. I think it's the (laughs) making sure that people remember it, which is stupid anyway. Yeah, but I mean... Some of it's useless information in the first place. I've always disliked school where it was nothing but... Here's the fact, okay, at the end of the week, you have to spit it back to me. Mm-hmm. What do we really teach? Or spit an opinion at me. Like, if it's a fact, why do my opinions not relevant yeah. anymore? Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> like, why do you want me to write my feelings about it? I really don't have much else to say about it. So. No, I think we, we pretty much talked it out. So I read this in my copy of Paycheck and Other Stories, which is... Um, Available from used sources, but it's not in print right now. Not this copy. There are... um, Folio Society has a big volume of selected stories of Philip K. Dick, Mm -hmm. which isn't too pricey. They do have the complete stories, which is ridiculously pricey and sold out long long ago. Um, So... what it comes down to, there's there's PDFs of the original magazine online that you can read for free that has the story in, or you can find a variety of used sources that will have the story in that collection, this being one of them. So you should be able easily be able to find the story and read it 
and enjoy it. And it is an enjoyable story, and it is one I would recommend. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, guys. Like, subscribe, comment if you have thoughts, especially on the AI topic. This is so controversial right now. Like, let us know your thoughts, because everybody's got opinions and feelings about it. Mm -hmm. um, also, support us on our Patreon, as well as through our Etsy store. We have some beautiful collections of really nice used books that we'd like to pass on to you. And all the proceeds go to trying to help us publish really pretty books and really nice copies of things that we feel are really underappreciated but wonderful pieces of mm -hmm. literature. So, thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.